Yes? Mr. Werris, Pages, Mulligan, and Devlin. We've come for the jackpot question on the Calling Cinderella show. May I see your authorization, please? Authorization, yes, sir. <laughs> From Mr. Brown. Your identification, please. <laughs> Hollywood YMCA. No, no, excuse me. There's my picture right there. This picture doesn't look like you. Well, you see, on the day that this picture was taken, I had a tooth pulled. Here's my identification, sir. I, I was much thinner when that was taken. One moment, please. I'll get the confidential crackpot question. Gee, I sure would like to take a peek in that room. There's ten million dollars worth of answers in there, Mick. Yeah, but you haven't got a chance of getting in there, Fred. They won't even let Groucho in there. <laughs> Careful that box. Yes. Remember, you're both responsible for seeing it's delivered safely. You can count on us, sir. <laughs> De <-hut. Power. laughs> you know, Art. One of the reasons I selected you to MC the Calling Cinderella show was because I thought you had a lot of warmth. Oh, I appreciate that, Charles. But somehow, in that script, it doesn't come through. You know, I think Mr. we Brown? ought to... Excuse me, please. Yes, Pat? Mickey and Freddie are here with the jackpot question. Send Mickey in with it, please. Cover up that script, Art. Oh, here you are, Mr. Brown, the right. jackpot question. Right on the desk, Mulligan. Yes, sir. Good work. Can't be too careful. Yes, you're, you're right, Mr. Brown. I don't believe that is necessary. But Mr. Brown, there's a lot of money to be won with that question in the box. There, somebody may be spying on us from that building across the street with a telescope. Good thinking, Mulligan. Go right ahead. Yes, sir. Now, Mr. Brown, would you care if I straightened no, up your desk? No, thank you. You may just leave. Art and I have a lot of work to do. Yes, sir. They sure lock that question up tightly, don't they? Do you mind going, Mulligan? Mr. Madison and I are the only two persons authorized to know the contents of this box. Yes, sir. Oh, just a minute, Mulligan. All right, we won't have time to go out for lunch. How about having something here? Fine. Would you please pick up some sandwiches and coffee for us? Sandwiches and coffee, yes, sir. All right, Art, let's get to work. Right. Uh, Mr. Brown, what kind of sandwiches would you like? Any kind. Any kind. Yes, sir. Now, Art, let's see what we have here. Uh, uh, how about peanut butter and dill pickle? Anything. Anything at all. Yes, sir. The jackpot question for tonight's Calling Cinderella show. How many electoral votes did George Washington receive the first time he ran for president? Good question. Oh, it's pretty tough, isn't mm -hmm. it? Better be. We're giving away a fortune and prizes. That's true. Now we'll see what the answer is. Mr. Brown. Mulligan. You forgot to give me money. Get it from petty cash. And please, leave us alone, please. <laughs> That'll keep him out. You hope. Now, let's see what the answer is, huh? 69. Well, that's interesting. George Washington received 69 electoral votes. Shh, not so loud. Yeah, you're right. We better lock it up until showtime. Mr. Brown. Now, wait a minute, Mulligan. I just wanted to warn you that the lock on this door was broke. Few words.
Doris to thank you for the lovely anniversary present she sent Joe and me. Uh, Joe, what did Uncle Timothy send us? Was it the sterling silver finger bowl? No, I think it was a bird bath. Didn't they send you a gift certificate to the television repair shop? I can't remember what it was. <laughs> We're certainly grateful, Uncle Timothy. Your present was just what we needed. I've had enough of those wrestlers. They're using the same routine they used last week. <laughs> They're groaning better. I'll <laughs> uh, change the program for you. It's probably for you, Joe. Pop? Not that? Hello. Hello. Yes, this is a Mulligan residence. My full name, uh, Mel Mulligan. Uh, calling Cinderella. <laughs> There's nobody here by that name. Oh, a quiz show. If you can answer the jackpot question, you will become Cinderella in real life and live in the lap of luxury for one full year through the courtesy of our sponsor, the Kismet Carpet Company. Here comes the big jackpot question, Pop. Gosh, I wonder who they're calling. I couldn't be less interested. You ready? Here's the big jackpot question. How many electoral votes did George Washington receive the first time he ran for president? Ooh, that's a stiff one. Take your time, you have 30 seconds. Gee, I didn't know anybody voted against George Washington. I wonder how many electoral votes he did get. Think hard, 20 seconds left. Hey, now. Please, Joe, I'm trying to think. I was just wondering, how old's Uncle Timothy? 69. 69, that's right. George Washington received 69 electoral votes. Hey, Pop, somebody answered the big jackpot question. Congratulations, Mrs. Mulligan. You are Cinderella. Mrs. Mulligan? This is who? I think that's who I am. The Kismet Carpet Company is going to give you one full year of luxury. Your home will be refurnished in the latest modern decor with carpets by Kismet, of course. You and your family will receive complete new wardrobes with a Rolls-Royce and chauffeur and the services of a butler and maid for one full year, plus many, many other valuable prizes. Wow! Yes, congratulations. Excuse me, please. Hello? In behalf of my mother, who uh, is in a daze, we want to thank you very much, sir. Thank you and goodbye. Gosh, Mom, just think. Me and Mickey, son of Cinderella. Go on. While my mother was on the phone, my father asked her how old Uncle Timothy was. She said 69. And you know the rest. You claim you didn't know the answer to that question? No, sir. We didn't know the answer. Oh, come now, Mulligan. While Madison and I were discussing the jackpot question and the answer, you were running in and out of the office all the time. But, but sir, believe me, I, I didn't hear a thing. My mind was only on the sandwiches. <laughs> well, even if I do believe you, it doesn't help the situation any. Why not? Look, your mother won the contest. You're an employee of the network. When the sponsor finds that out, we'll lose the account I'm out of a job, and you're out of a job. Maybe my mother ought to give the prizes back. It's too late for that. Fifty million people from coast to coast were watching that show and saw her win those prizes. Now, taking them back now would make the whole thing look like a fraud. If only you weren't an employee of the network. Then the network wouldn't lose its account, and you wouldn't lose your job? That's right. But I'd lose my job. <laughs> Let's lay our cards on the table. If you are not an employee of the network, then it's perfectly ethical for your mother to win the prizes. I understand, Mr. Brown. I see my duty clearly. I'm to sacrifice myself for the good of the network. Is that right? That's about the size of it. I know. I'm expendable, sir. <laughs> Therefore, I tender my resignation as of now. That's very decent of you, Mickey. Thank you. Mr. Brown. It's all right, sir. Excuse me? Yes, Pat? Mr. Walker is here. Send him in. Mickey, I, 
I can't tell you how much I... Walker. We can't let the president of the Kismet Carpet Companies find you here. No, no, not that door. He's coming in that way. <laughs> it's locked, Mr. Brown. Well, well, hide someplace. Hide. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Walker. Well, Brown. <laughs> My plane just landed, and I rushed right over here to tell you how delighted I was with last night's show. I'm so glad you liked it. You must be tired. Let's step out for a cup of coffee, shall no, we? No, 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 no. Let's stay right here and talk. Now, I have a very important idea I want to discuss with you. Are you sure you don't want a cup of coffee? No, 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 no. Now about <laughs> next week's show. I thought it would be a good idea if we did the whole program right from the Mulligan home. I like that very much. I thought you would. You see, this way we can show the millions of viewers throughout the country how the Mulligans are enjoying their new prosperity. Oh, splendid. <laughs> now then, I, oh, do you mind if I use your desk? Well, well uh, you see... Uh... Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Excuse me. I was just... Tidying up, sir. Well, won't you sit down? <laughs> well, thank you. Yes. Well, uh, good efficient personnel you have here, Brown. Thanks. <laughs> What's your name, young man? Uh, my name, sir, is Mickey Mullen. Uh, Mullen. Mickey Mullen, eh? Yes, sir, with two L's. <laughs> All right, Mull. You know, I'm always in the market for good efficient help. I'll bear you in mind. Well, thank you, sir. <laughs> and I never forget a face. Now, Brown, tell me more about the Mulligan family. Uh, there's three of them, isn't there? Uh, the mother, Nell, the father, Joe, and uh, uh, what's the son's name? I think his name is Mud. Mulligan residence. Michael Mulligan, I'm sorry, he can't be disturbed. He's taking his bubble bath. The Mulligans are appearing on the television tonight, you know. Thank you. I don't like that butler. Oh, now, Joe. Just keep him away from me. Tonight, when he drew my bath, he didn't even leave enough hot water for my shower. Oh, thanks. He's only doing his job. My, what a handsome man you are. You make me feel like a Cinderella, you Prince Charming, you. Yeah, I feel more comfortable in a suit of armor than in a straitjacket. <laughs> you only have to wear it tonight, dear. The minute the television show is over, you can take it off. Now, why did we let them talk us into bringing television cameras into our house? Oh, it'll all be over in a couple of hours. Well, I don't like it. Now, sit down and relax. Sit down and relax? I'm afraid to sit down. You should give programs so you could tell the chairs from the ashtrays. Oh, I know what you mean. I'm not enjoying this life of luxury as much as I thought I would. Those darn flying saucers. Now, Nell, I've had one week of this, and that's about all I can take. Mother, you look absolutely ravishing. <laughs> Get this dog out of here. He looks like a foreign agent. Why, Ivan is of noble birth, Papa. Why, he's, he's a gentle beast. <laughs> Just a bit high strung. Oh, Banks! Yes? Would you mind taking Ivan out and feeding him his caviar? Very good. Yes. Boy, Ivan. <laughs> I think the dog and that butler are in cahoots. Michael, are you really enjoying this new life of ours with servants and bubble baths and comfortable furniture? Comfortable furniture? What's comfortable about that? Well, maybe it isn't even furniture. Maybe we're supposed to hang it from the ceiling. No, it's, it's a chair, Mom. Oh, it's a chair. Well, let's see you sit in it. <laughs> I vote we hang it from the ceiling. I will answer the door, Mr. Mulligan. I can't even answer my own doorbell. Yeah, this is very comfortable once you get used to it, you see. It's a rocking thing. Mr. Charles Brown. Good evening, Mr. Mulligan, Mrs. Mulligan. Hello. Me 
Michael? Yes, sir. My, we all look charming this evening. Oh. Well, the show goes on in an hour, and I got here a little early to tell you, don't get excited, you see? When you're in front of the cameras, just act perfectly normal. Right. Uh, I'll be glad when it's over. Well, the remote truck has just arrived, and the crew will be moving the equipment in any minute now. Good. Michael. Yes, sir? I uh, just wanted to remind you. Mr. Walker will be watching the show on a TV set in my office. Now, under no circumstances, allow your face to be seen by the cameras. I understand. When the camera is on me, I'm not to be seen. I'll just casually... <laughs> well, don't you fail me, Michael. I, I won't, sir. You because can't. if Mr. Walker should connect you with the Mulligan family, my career will come to a very sudden end. Oh, don't worry. I'll, I'll, I'll follow. <laughs> yes, sir. The cover for the chair has just arrived. The chair? What, what, what chair? Uh, the chair you were trying to sit in. Oh, oh, that, that chair, I see. Well, no, no, no wonder it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's got a cover on it, you see. There we go. Ah, I should have known. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tonight, the Calling Cinderella show is being telecast direct from the home of Cinderella Nell Mulligan, who last week won our jackpot prize. As you can see, the Mulligan home has been transformed by the magic wand of the Kismet Carpet Company into a paradise of beauty and luxury. Why doesn't the camera focus on the carpet? That's what we're selling. At just a wealth and comfort. Hope Nick's on the ball tonight. Oh, I'm worried, Freddy. I don't see how he can avoid the camera for 30 minutes. Nell Mulligan. Next. Let's meet the man of the family, Mr. Oh, sorry, Sergeant Joe Mulligan. And, of course, their fine young son, uh, Michael Mulligan. Michael? Close call. The carpet. What Along about with the, the dog carpet? Keep licking his face. You'll we notice that Mulligans are good. standing on a beautiful kismet carpet. Remember. When you walk on a kismet carpet, you feel like you're walking on air. And now, once again, let's turn back to the lucky Mulligans. Now they're seated on their beautiful new couch. Now I'd like to ask you, Michael Mulligan, how do you feel about your mother's good fortune? Well, I'm very, very happy about the whole thing because I'm very happy that she uh, Michael, you are uh, the camera, our viewers can't see you. Oh, well, I don't know why they would want to see me in the first place. After all, she is the star of our Look, show tonight. Your face is still blocked from the camera. Let's get rid of these flowers, shall we? Wait a minute. I'm glad you got rid of those because I'm allergic to the flowers. Thank you. There you are, Why can't we gentlemen. see that kid's face? Bad camera work. There's nothing oh. pretentious about oh, that was a close call. He's running out of things to hide behind. He's sure to be yeah, trapped sooner or later. Right let me think, let me think. There's Mrs. got to be a way out. Too bad the reception's so good. Joe Mulligan is a man his the reception, family can be that's it. And the reception's Michael, too good. Well, what's the matter? He's oh, I just thought I'd clear up the picture, sir, so uh, so you could see the rugs better. At the moment, he's peeking out from behind the drape. Now what did you do? Oh, uh, the two blue, sir. Nothing to get excited about. I'll go call the maintenance man. What a time for the set to go out. Uh, these are, are called uh, mo mobiles, and uh, they add an attractive touch to the room, don't you think? It's hiding your face. Are you sure? Now, let's look at the balance of the Mulligan home. Hello? Nick? Yes, Freddy, what? Listen, you're in the clear. I pulled the plug on the set and Mr. Walker can't see you anymore. You don't have to worry about hiding your face. You Good walk boy, Freddy. Air. Good boy. When you walk on a kismet carpet. Well, our viewers have seen the interior of your beautiful home. Now, Mr. In Madison, where were we before we were interrupted by the oh, oh. Uh, Excuse me, Sergeant. Mrs. Mulligan. Yes, uh, I just wanted to get a good shot here so that everybody could You're see exactly. I know, but the viewers wanted to know what I looked like, and I just wanted to show them this. It's, it's, it's too... Breathing into the lens. Oh, that, I'm sorry. Well, it's, it's so, I'm sorry that this isn't a color telecast. You know, my eyes are Kelly Green. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I want to thank my good friend Freddie Devlin for making this picture possible. 
Thank you, Fred. Well, thank you very much, Mike Mulligan. And ladies and gentlemen, this has been an on-the-spot broadcast brought to you by the makers of Kismet Carpets. Remember, when you walk on a Kismet, you feel like you're Keep walking... Keep your right. hands off that set. Ladies and gentlemen, I see our time is running out. Never forget that face. It's a pleasure to take you to the Mulligan <laughs> That's Mickey Moe, alias Michael Mulligan. Heads are going to roll tonight. How did you expect to get away with it? Did you think you could make fools of me and the company? Of course not, Mr. Walker. Please don't interrupt while I'm talking. I hold you personally responsible for this fiasco. Excuse me, sir, but I overheard what you were saying. As for My you, Mull, alias Mulligan, let's get this straight. The Kismet Carpet Company is not going to stand for being swindled. Just a minute, Mr. Walker. Nobody's going to accuse my son of swindling. We didn't want these prizes in the first place. Well, what Pop is trying to say, Mr. Walker, is that... Uh, you can have the prizes back. Well, you see, we discovered we were much happier without them, so you can take them back and give them to another Cinderella. You mean you actually want to give up all this luxury? Luxury? Well, <laughs> you just try sitting in this chair. Take the prizes back and give them to someone else. You know, it was just a thought, Mr. Walker. Well, of course, it wouldn't work. Quiet, Brown. Uh, go ahead. What's your idea? Well, I just thought that maybe you'd run the contest again and give the same prizes to a uh, new Cinderella. That's yes, right. and it wouldn't cost the company another dime. And think of the added publicity. It would make headlines. Generous Cinderella returns fortune and prizes so that another Cinderella may enjoy them. And Brilliant the, idea. This much carpet company would come out smelling like a rose. I knew we'd figure a way out. Would I come out smelling like a rose too, Mr. Brown? Well, we've got to get right to work on next week's show. I'll keep right on it, Mr. What about my job, Mr. Brown? Well, we fired Mo, so you can come... You can come to work in the morning, Mulligan. Oh, thank you, sir. Uh, good night. Good night. Good night. Gosh, that just goes to prove that maybe Cinderella is better off with a pumpkin than with a coach and horses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'll give them 24 hours to get this thing out of... <laughs> hey, that's not bad. <laughs> hey, Michael. Is it about time for the wrestling matches? I, I'm tuning in on the wrestling matches now, Pop. Well, keep it low. I'm trying to finish this letter to Uncle Timothy. Well, I think this is the right channel. It's the right channel, all right. I'm Mickey Rooney. <laughs> hey, Pop, this is gonna be a swell wrestling match. Not hit Francois and Six Toes McGee. Hello, Joe Mulligan. <laughs> what? Michael, what street does Uncle Timothy live on? Merrimack. What do you mean, that's right? That's the right answer, sir. The ship that fought the Monitor in the great naval battle of 1862 was the Merrimack. I wasn't talking to you, I was talking to my wife. But you said the Merrimack, sir. And the opportunity... <laughs> Knock show is going to shower you with prizes. We'll completely redecorate your home. They're and not going to redo our house. I'll show them in you mentioned Merrimack, didn't you? Did. Well, why why did I mentioned Merrimack? I don't care. Well, it doesn't make any difference. Mickey Rooney will be back in just a moment. Oh, by the way, we finally talked the MC out of not giving us all of those great prizes. We're back living the normal, comfortable Mulligan life. So until next week. Oh, excuse me. Hello? What? But, look, I don't want to win any prizes. I don't care if it was the secret word. I don't want a jackpot. Good night, friends.